Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to this video on understanding redstone comparators. Now, impossible, you say? Nobody can understand those things. Well, it's kind of true. They are pretty tough to understand, but it's not impossible. And if I figured it out, you can figure it out. So let's get started. Now, there are four different things a comparator can do. The first one is that it can maintain a signal strength. In other words, the output strength coming out of a comparator can equal the input strength. Now here's a good example of where that would come in handy. If you look at these three rows of lamps, you can see that the light gets shorter and shorter. That's because the redstone signal is getting weaker and weaker as it goes down the line. But what if we didn't want that? What if we wanted all three of these to be equal? Well, what we could do is put in a comparator. And now you can see the first two match, but the third one is still short. Well, what if we wanted to just carry that on? We put in another comparator. Now, this input signal matches this output signal, which becomes the input signal, which matches this output signal. And we could do this as long as we wanted, and these would all be the same length because of the way the comparator works. Now, that's the simple one. Number two is a little tougher. And that is the fact that a comparator can compare signal strengths. Say that 10 times fast. It can compare the signal strengths from the side and from the input. Now, if you take a look here, the input is running at 14. This is running at 15, 14, 13, 12. So this signal is less than the input signal. Therefore, the input signal gets passed through. So this will equal this and it lights the light. Now again, a weaker signal lets the input pass through. But what if it's a stronger signal? Well, let's do that. Now it's a stronger signal. Notice how the lamp turned off? That's because the stronger signal coming in from the side will not pass through this signal. And that way you can compare redstone signals to know which one is stronger using a, you guessed it, comparator. Now the reason that I can tell it's in comparative mode is because this isn't lit. If this is lit, now it's in subtraction mode, which is totally different and I'll explain that next. Comparative mode, subtraction mode, comparative mode, subtraction mode, comparative mode, got it? Now this next one is probably the toughest to understand. Even I struggle with this one. Oh, listen to that, even I struggle with this one. Uh, but I do, and what this is, is the subtraction mode gives you an output that is the input minus the higher of the two side inputs. Think about that. <laughs> what that means is that here you've got your input of, four, or of uh, 15, all right? And now here we've got our input of 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. So we have 15 coming in, eight from this side. This side is coming in at five. So what'll happen is this will subtract the higher signal. So we subtract eight from 15 and we get seven. So let's see if that's true. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it is. It just performs a little bit of math to compare those signals. So again, subtraction mode works by comparing the input minus the higher of the two side inputs, and that'll give you your output strength. Little, uh, little glazing of the eyes, is that what I'm seeing? Yeah, this one gets a little confusing, and you may have to look it up on the wiki when you need it, but at least know it's out there that you can create something that will, uh, that will measure signals and create a changed output based on the difference of the inputs. So. Now the last one's the fun one. This is the one where you get to measure the stuff inside containers and the state of blocks. Now here's a good example. If we look inside this hopper, we can see that it's full, all right? It's full of bricks. Now, if we look down this line of redstone lamps, you can see that it's almost full. I added a, another one in there, so let's get rid of that one. There we go. Now it's full. Now watch what happens if we take a stack out. Oh, we lost a few. Take another stack out. Oh, we lost a few more. What's basically happening is that the comparator is 
measuring how much stuff is in that hopper. And it'll do the same thing with a lot of stuff like furnaces and brewing stands and cart chests or chest carts or chests in carts or carts with chests or just chests or mine carts. All of those can be measured by a comparator. The comparator can also measure the state of blocks. And what that means is that, for example, you eat a chunk out of this cake, oops, <laughs> or you explode the cake as the case may be. But if I ate a chunk out of that piece of cake, then it would change the output of the signal coming from that cake. In this case, with a jukebox, it'll tell me what is playing in the jukebox based on the strength of the redstone signal. Cool, huh? It'll tell me how full a cal uh, cauldron is. And this is my favorite. It'll tell me which way an item is pointed on a um, uh, item frame. Can you see that in the background? Look at how that's getting longer, shorter, longer, shorter. And that's it. Four different ways that you can use a comparator. If your eyes are glazed over right now, watch it again. If they're still glazed over, watch it again, watch it again, watch it again. <laughs> now, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment. Most of all, share or subscribe. Now, if you didn't like this video, eh, keep it to yourself. Thanks for watching.